Okay, solving right angle triangles, and I think this is the fun of, of trig, at least kind of starting out to be given two parts of a triangle, either an angle and a side, or maybe two sides, and we have to work out the rest of the triangle. We can figure out all sides, all angles, this stage as long as it's a right angle triangle. So that's our crucial part to start with. Must be a right angle triangle, then we're good to go. Please don't start thinking, well, if you're given any old triangle, whether it's that or a triangle actually has three sides, right? But we can't use trig without things unless, without triangles unless they're right angle. Okay, so we're solving them. We're finding everything. We're given two things. In this case, we're given two sides. Now, if we're given two sides, two angles, well, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to look at the trig ratios. Remember, we've got so ka toa and we've got that ready to go so it can help us along. So let's start with alpha. Alpha is the bottom left, and let's start with it. Relative to alpha, what do we have in terms of opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? I've got this 7, that's opposite, and we've got this 8, which is adjacent. So if we've got opposite and adjacent, which of the three trig ratios are we using? Yeah this toa, tan, because we've got opposite and adjacent. So if we take the tan of alpha, then what would it be? And it has to be the tan of alpha. Please don't write tan. Tan of what? It has to be tan of an angle. So tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent is 7 over 8. Okay. And therefore, if we want to find alpha, we're going to do that shift, shift thing. Remember that opposite of tan, so we're going tan to the minus 1 of 7 over 8. Calculator, shift tan, because we're finding an angle, 7 over 8. Let's just close our bracket so it's all looking good. And we get 41 comma, what does it say? doesn't say how many, let's go for one decimal place all around. So we've got 41 comma 2, I think it says. Cool, 40. 1 comma 2 degrees. Okay, so we've got 41 comma 2 degrees. Okay, so now we want to find out two other things. We need to find out what theta is and we need to find what this hypotenuse is. Now for theta, we could go, oh, well, let's go a similar option. Tan of theta is 8 over 7 and then shift tan or sum of angles in triangle. 90 degrees, 41 what would that be? So we know that 90 degrees plus alpha, 41, 2 degrees plus theta. If we add all our angles up, we must get 180 degrees. Reason, sum of angles in triangle. Must always give our reasoning for what we're doing. So therefore, theta equals, well, 180 minus that minus that. So we've got 180 minus the first that was 90, the second that was 41, 2, and we get, notice that it was a fraction, and I can just hit this S to D, so to decimal, so I can get it as a decimal, and we get 48, 8 degrees. Cool, looking good, 48, 8. Hypotenuse, now we've got myriad of options here. We could use sine and go sine is opposite of our hypotenuse but let's just use our dear old friend Pythagoras always works nicely so we can just go 7 squared plus 8 squared equals the hypotenuse I'm just going to call it hype squared reason Pythagoras and I've not really planned my space out too well so we're just going to go 7 squared plus 8 squared square root and we'll get the hypotenuse so hypotenuse equals, I'm going to take the square root of 7 squared plus 8 squared, is that looking good, and square root of 113 s to d, it's our friend 10 comma 63, so 10 comma 63, it's that kind of thing, units, we don't have it centimeters, meters, units, okay, so we can just leave it unit list. Okay, so there we go, there's our general idea of how we could work this out. This one here, find A, B, and the third side. I'm going to leave you to do because it's going to be a similar idea. We've just done this where we're given two sides. What about if we're given 
an angle and a side. Okay, so we've given this 23 and this 20. Let's use something to do with this 23. Let's say we want to find out what AB is. That's going to be our starting point. So we've got our so ka toa ready on hand. So from this 23, we've got the opposite that we're trying to find, and we're given the hypotenuse. So opposite hypotenuse, we must be dealing with sine. So sine of 23 equals the opposite, AB, we don't know what that is yet, over 20 equation to solve. We want to find AB. So let's multiply that by 20. So those cancel. What we do on one side, we do on the other. Okay, so AB equals 20 times sine 23. So AB equals 20 times sine 23, close bracket, equals 7,81. I think we get the 7,81. Okay, so we got 7,81. Now we need to work out, let's go for this angle. Sum of angles in triangle. 23 plus 90 plus that gives you 180. So angle B is just, so we need to go 180. We still need to subtract that right angle, minus 90, minus the 23. Oh, I'm pretty sure I wrote that in wrong. 180 minus 90 minus 23 equals 67. I think we get there, 67. 67 degrees okay so we got that as 67 and we need to find AC I've got a few options we could use Pythagoras this squared plus this squared equals this squared so let's actually just finish this off by running through all our options just for thoroughness obviously just pick one I suggest picking the one that doesn't rely on something you found out already if possible because if you made a mistake, you don't carry that mistake through. Don't worry in terms of marks, you'll still get all the marks, but just to make sure we're trying to get the right values. So the one option would be Pythagoras, and for that we'd say AC squared plus 7,81 squared equals 20 squared. So therefore AC equals that squared minus that squared square root. So square root of 20 squared minus... 7,81 squared, I'm very slow on the calculator, aren't I? Equals 18,41. Okay, option two. Mind we use our 23 and say we've got the adjacent side and we've got the hypotenuse. So which one deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? Cos. So we could say cos 23 equals, we said it was cos is adjacent, so AC over 20 times 20 times 20, these would cancel and we just get AC equals 20 times cos 23, 20 times cos 23, 18,41. Cool. Now you might notice that the decimal places after that are a little bit different. And that's because we're rounding off somewhere along the way. So we're going to have those errors. Okay, and a third way would be maybe to use the 67 and then to use opposite and hypotenuse or adjacent and hypotenuse, one of the other trig ratios. But these are kind of our two, I think, that stick out using the trig method or using Pythagoras. Either one works. There's no reason to use one over the other except maybe that this one used values that was given, this method used our value that we found and then rounded off. So it could be less accurate, but really both for the win.